Hello and welcome to Road to Distraction episode 29. I think. We think it is. <laughs> if I am, we'll just change it and I'll, I'll dub. You'll see my mouth mouthing though it's 29, but we'll put a different number over it. Yeah, we'll have a completely different voice to Paul's as well, so it, it won't stand out at all. It'll go. Hello and welcome to Road to Distraction. <laughs> episode 28. What is it? Nicky We're owned by Disney now, are we? Yes! <laughs> I'm sorry. Are they going to ruin you like everything else? <laughs> yep! <laughs> I'm, waiting for, I'm waiting for Star Wars to start out and all the lightsabers are made of flowers. That? Well, that. Okay, a VW Beetle just went past with eyelashes on the headlights. Awesome! It's obviously a ghoul beetle. And they wonder why I give up on cars. Well, they're not right. The only objects gave from me to be. You'd love the two we had in work like the other day. We actually make a circuit board that controls part of the car in McLaren. Oh god. They're road cars, not they're racing cars. That's gonna be cut. But they had two of their cars at our factory the other day. They had two uh, at the cheaper end of the market, they were like a hundred thousand pounds or so. But there are two of them there. I didn't bother bother to go out. I went out to go and see Helen to ask for as a work work out to do next. But a lot of people out there getting their photographs started taken by them. Very nice cars they were apparently, very shiny, very pretty. One was orange, one was black. It's lovely. By the way, Death Bear isn't here. <gasps> because it's Nightmare Owl. Nightmare Owl is here today. Hello, Nightmare Owl. Why are you a Nightmare Owl? I can see it's those eyes. I will do what you say, Master. Sorry. <coughs> okay, who's first? Okay, I'll go. I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going. Fuck you. I'm driving. It's my car. <laughs> my rules. Go for it. Okay, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon were actually 300 miles away in Nineveh in Iraq. Woo! Whereas, uh, I don't know if you know about the, the, the myth, it's supposedly there was an ancient palace. Yeah. Um, and it was probably the most beautiful gardens in the world, and all the gardens were hanging down over the sides of monuments. I'll put a picture on screen now. But recent research says that it's nowhere near, there's no evidence to support uh, the historical, you know, evidence. Or, well, you know, the, the written stuff. Yeah. It's actually 300 miles away. See, you lying pigs! I mean, it's, it's like Plato and, and Atlantis. He's the only person to mention Atlantis in literature. And yet there's this whole myth about Atlantis being real because of one man's book. Yeah. It's the, it's the missing continent, they reckon. Yeah. Besides being incontinent. Obviously that ain't missing, that still exists. Hold on. Why is it a missing continent if it's just some city? Because it was a continent. Yeah, they reckon it was a continent, now, wouldn't they? With, like symmetric rings, that's the latest theory, and it just sunk. I reckon it was made of sugar, and when it sunk into the ocean, it dissolved. Possibly. Let's make an island of sugar. Seems wonderful. Excuse me, folks, my hair's a bit messy. First you get the sugar, then you get the power, then you get the wind. Uh, I don't know what that's from. Uh, Scarface, isn't it? Oh, that's probably right. I don't like gangster movies, really. I just don't. Not even Bugsy Malone? Bugsy Malone in a gangster film. It's a piss take and it's it hysterical. It is! It's real life! Is it? Don't ruin the illusion! You wanna be a boxer in the golden ring? <laughs> okay. We could have been anything that we wanted to be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, you mean like The Hobbit? The unexpected musical. Yeah. I still haven't seen that yet, and I'm declining to watch it until it's out on cheap DVD. You don't need to take free movies to kill smog! Okay. If you do. That's the dragon there, the whole point of The Hobbit is to kill. Who is voiced by Luke Evans. Mm. A Welsh actor. Well, oh, all right. voice, Smog's voiced by Benedict mm -hmm. Cumberbatch. Well, they reckon now Luke Evans must be doing it. I don't know. Imagine what they're right, bud. I'm gonna kill you now, bud. <laughs> oh, is he? Oh, no. Luke Evans is doing something else. I'm wrong. I tell like it's it's it's, it's Dom, it's Dom Lick Cumberbund. 
Oh, the guy who's who, who named after a belt. It'd be awesome. funny if he was the voice of um, Drippy from Nino Cooney. Oh, just, God. Hey, but. Hello, but. I know you. Great stuff. Some kind of ring. I'm going to smash you straight Drippy. in the arsehole. Drippy's voice is perfect. Yeah. Proper Welsh. Anyway. Welcome to my world, Bucky boy. I love it. Now. Dun, dun, dun. Shall we go to Connor? Have we finished? Have we finished? I, I, I finished, yeah. It was, yeah. Go. Go on! A tea bag. In. Oh, to okay. be the one. Oh, I'm sorry! Oh! Ooh. You did! <laughs> sorry, Connor. I had to leave. Sorry, Connor. <laughs> Carry on. A tea bag. Drop the, the world's biggest, weighing an enormous 151 kilograms, has been unveiled in Queensland, Australia. For once this week, I actually have the locations. Yay! Planet Organic, the Planet Organic Food Company showed off the giant creation this week in its bid to raise money for cancer awareness. <laughs> Standing three meters high and held in place by a forklift, the bag will make around about 100,000 cups of tea for thirsty tea lovers. Awesome! I got a friend called Philippa who could probably do that in one sitting. She drinks her tea like it's good. I mean, one one day she turned and said on Facebook, "I think 13 cups of tea is my limit." Yeah, <laughs> that's a lot of cups of tea, Phil. I tell her now, love, I, 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 that's, a, that's a lot. That's like 12 people's worth, a lot. No, it ain't. If you enjoy it, love it. They're Go saying, on. though, it won't be dunked in hot water anytime soon, however, as bosses are yet to find a mug big enough to hold it. <laughs> hey! Although the regular is yet to be officially confirmed, marketing manager Brian Condon is confident of taking the title. Love it. Did that you see his name? Letter, with... Yeah, that was one letter away from being there. <laughs> I just thought his real name was Brian Condom. Sorry. <laughs> Plus he's a bit of a dick. Hello, I'm Brian, okay. <laughs> Brian Condom. <laughs> okay, we've got silly heads on, guys. Okay, James, it's your turn. Speak up, because okay. you're a quiet fucker. <laughs> so, I don't know how many people in here watch Doctor Who. Me? No, I don't think no. so. Well, um, John Hurt is in the 50th anniversary, and he's apparently playing the Doctor. And this is because... That's what's been rumoured, is it? No, it's been confirmed. Oh! For some reason, he's playing the ninth Doctor, and Christopher Eccleston was actually the 10th Doctor. Which makes David Tennant the 11th, and this current one the 12th Doctor. Yeah. Because Moffat can't write a story about more fucking it up. Yeah, I know. I, I, I like that, but more fuck it, you know. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. But yeah, that's where he's supposed to be, is he's supposed to be the ninth? Yeah. Because apparently the, he purposely wiped his memory and forgot about it. That's, that makes sense. Because he did something horrible in the Time War. Oh. Yeah, well, he wiped out all the rest of the. <laughs> he, he wiped every fucker out. That's what he did. He was. I'm gonna have you. I'm gonna make sure you're dead. Killed and not alive and stuff. Anyway, it's your turn, Dad. Is it my turn? Yeah. Okay. There is a website uh, that lets you send a gallon of cow, elephant, or gorilla poo anonymously to someone as revenge. <laughs> I can't remember. They didn't have the name of the website on there, but my God, that's awesome. Imagine you really don't like to be all right. Let's have a look. Yeah. Or him. Send it to him. Gorilla poo through the door. Love it. Every guy would be like saying, "Yeah, what is this? It's a gallon of poo." Like, no, they don't. It, it, because it's, it's wrapped. It's, it's, uh, they don't know where it is. Nobody knows where it is. It gets sent. It's delivered. It's sealed. It's airtight. So when you open it up, all you get is the stench of gorilla poo, cow poo, elephant poo. Strip the slot box. How awesome is that? <laughs> I, I, there's a few people I could think of for that. Mm. I, I'd like to send some some people. I don't like letter bombs, but that's a bit much. Well, maybe not. I don't know. But <laughs> you light it on fire. Well, the, the pool, well, I suppose you could if you know, there's probably methane in there by the time it gets here from wherever it comes from. Yeah, That's a bit much, isn't it? But it just shows that no matter what idea you have, somebody will always pay for it. Yeah. Wow. How's that for silly? Well, that is. And. Okay, folks. That's good. A one million pound cocaine gang who drove a van with Columbia's finest written on the side is, has been jailed. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to advertise, guys. <laughs> All right. They're from Gateshead, up at Tyne and Weir. Oh, I'll say no more. And the, the police found the drugs hidden inside Daz washing powder boxes inside the van. 
and this business has apparently been set up at all like different music festivals and that in a stall with Columbia's finest written all over it and here's a picture on screen now that is all kinds of awesome yeah <laughs> idiots <laughs> sorry oh god that's all that's brilliant that is absolutely brilliant I yeah. love that you're supposed to advertise, you dozy. Tell your English, can I? Yeah. It's <laughs> all about good advertising, for Christ's sake. Oh, damn right. Hello, uh, Nightmare Owl. And I'm not mistaken, it's... Hold on. Well, it's as if I ain't dead yet. You're not dead yet. Speak up, boy. Right. Going on to, from funny news to... Um, well, a miracle. A determined puppy survived against the odds after being locked in an abandoned car for almost a month. A 12-week-old canine, who has been named Kia, managed to stay alive by eating rubbish left in the vehicle, including McDonald's scraps and cigarettes. Oh, yeah. poor bugger. Without a, well, this is a quote from a vet, veterinarian. Yeah, that's one. A, a appreciable amount of water. It's been pretty miraculous for a puppy to survive over three weeks in a car. The ordeal began when the vehicle was impounded at the Kansas City tow lot by officials on April 8th. Uh, the puppy was actually discovered by a worker earlier on this week. Wow. That's, that is... Yeah, people like Say that yeah. my cat disappeared for three weeks and we couldn't find her for love nor money. She must have been locked in somewhere. That's three weeks, by the way. No food. She must have been licking water off the walls or whatever. She came back, but she was very, very thin. If she'd have been gone another week, she'd have probably died. But she was obviously stuck somewhere. So, I mean, animals are pretty determined to survive on anything. They will actually, they'll, they'll stop moving around so yeah. much. They'll just lick water from wherever they can and preserve as much moisture. And they'll, they'll survive. They're tough as old boots. God bless them. So best of luck, that puppy. And, James. Okay. It's, it's you, turn. Okay, so I don't know how many people in the car have played the Batman games by Rocksteady. Not me. Yeah, me. But um, they can confirm that the third one, Arkham Origins, isn't being made by Rocksteady. Mm -hmm. Kevin Conroy isn't voicing Batman in it. Mm -hmm. And there's multiplayer. Oh. So <sighs> I don't know why they. I assume they're just cashing in on the franchise. Oops, it's moved. I suppose so. Oh, that's that's bad. What period is it set? I did hear it was going it's to be like a prequel or something. Set two years after he became Batman. Uh, League of Assassins are out to kill him, including Deathstroke and Black Mask. Yeah. Hmm. Ooh. Uh, but possibly understand the voice. Maybe you want like a younger sound in Batman. But yeah, they might do. Stick uh, multiplayer on it. Everybody's obsessed with multiplayer. It, you don't need it. No, certain games don't need it. I mean, there was a cracking shooter released a few last year called Spec Ops The Line, which oh is a fan God. fantastic storyline about... Is... Well done, mate. Let's stand by the side of the road, a busy road, and piss into a bush. That's great, yeah. In, uh... Sorry. <laughs> Spec Ops The Line is brutal. Yeah, it, it shows the real side of war, not the COD style where, look at me, I've got like a million bullets and don't have to reload. That kind of crap. It's realistic, as gritty as blood violence and all that. But anyway, they stuck multiplayer on it, and which was at the behest of the publisher rather than the developer. And Jaeger, who developed the game, tried to you know, keep it out. But in the end, the publishers won, and in the end, nobody played it. Which is all the stat ship. So, certain games, they don't need it. It's just a cash cow. Silly, am I? I? I've got a little story now. Um, the company that made Fantastic Four a few years ago, um, which weren't that great of films, they weren't that bad either. I've seen a lot worse films made. Yeah, that Jessica Alba in it. That was yeah, amazing. that's it. Um, they're going to reboot it now before the license goes back to Marvel. Now, they've already cast a girl to play Susan Storm. She's got long dark hair, very pretty, but they're going to obviously dye her hair blonde because yeah. Susan Storm is blonde. But they are casting a guy called Michael B. Jordan, who was in um, Chronicle. All oh, right, I thought you meant the basketball player. <laughs> <laughs> no. Come on and slam. <laughs> anyway, he's been approached to play Johnny Storm. Now, doesn't sound so bad. Johnny Storm, Michael G. B. Jordan, is black. Okay. Now, I hate to say it, but Johnny Storm and Susan Storm are brother and sister. I want to know if that's the one they're going with. The well, if they do the origin story, then they have to. The well, yeah, yes, but the first human torch was an android. But anyway, 
Yeah, but he was still not black. Now, you're either going to have Susan and Johnny Storm to be white, because they're brother and sister, unless, of course, Johnny is adopted. Or, you have Susan and Johnny Storm to be black. Stop messing about with stuff, guys. Stick with the true story. I actually read a comment from a guy, lots of people saying, oh, you're only saying that because it's racist, yada, yada, yada. There was a guy in and he said, I'm black, and I do not want a black Johnny Storm. I do not want a black editor of the newspaper in Superman. And I wish they'd stop arsing around with characters from comic books. And this was his statement. It is right, Susan Storm and Johnny Storm are white. So is Reed Richards, and so is Ben Grimm. Okay, Ben Grimm becomes orange, but you know, pff, there we are. You know, the orange Hulk. Oh, same, isn't it? Now, that makes my son laugh. It's okay. Um, but it's really annoying. And it's almost like we can't make a film without making at least one of the characters black because we'll be called racist. I mean, I'm sure that's why they do it. Did you know if Doctor Doom is a villain? I don't know who the bad guy is in it in at all. I they, haven't, they haven't got that far into it. They've started casting people. I haven't heard nothing about the story, but they are rebooting it again before Marvel owns it. Unless they want to go and make Mole Man the villain. They could do. But let us know your opinions on that sort of thing, because they always seem to do it. They did it with Nick Fury, but yes, the alternate universe, there was a black Nick Fury, so therefore they can get away with it. But they, they're doing it a lot. I mean, like I said, they've made the editor in the new Man of Steel film, Black. It's Lawrence Fishburne, the editor of the, of, of the Daily Planet. Is the Daily Planet? Yeah. Yeah. Um, was white. He's always been white. God. But suddenly they're going to make him Lawrence Fishburne. I do not like the look of that movie. He looks like a good Superman, but he looks like a crap Clark Kent. I think General Zod looks dumb as shit. Well, we'll see what it's like when it comes out. But let us know your opinions about people taking comic book characters who are white yeah. and making them black. Because I guarantee you, if you made a Blade film, or a Black Panther film, and you put Jason Statham in either of them, there would be fucking hell to pay. It wouldn't work very well if Jason Statham was like, my name's T'Challa. No, but they wouldn't have to make him that, would they? They could say, I mean, he could be found in the jungle, brought up by natives in Africa. There's what? going to be a fair in here, we can't park here. Fair, 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 fair. But I mean, yeah, but if they did that, it'd be a fit. Oh, Luke, Luke Cage. Uh, Luke, is Luke Cage, man? Uh, Luke Cage is black. Luke Cage is black. What if they made Jason Statham him? I'm sure they'd be all else to pay. People would say, ah, but he's black. Well, yeah. You know, like Johnny Storm was white. Unless you know, you know your ideas are. But I don't give a damn. If they are going to make Johnny Storm black, then his sister should be black as well. That's all I'm saying. You can't have... I mean, I just suspend belief when Johnny Storm was played by Chris Evans and his sister was Jessica Alba, who's part Oriental. <laughs> don't get me wrong, she played the part very well. Um, I didn't think the storylines were fantastic in it, but there we go. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> yeah, no, pa no pun was intended. Uh, but, okay. but let us know your thoughts on that, about, about the comic book uh, characters who are generally white being, uh, being made into black people. They're doing it in a lot of films. But if you did the other way around, they'd be hell to pay. I know they would. There'd be people complaining. Blade him, white. Blade him, white. Yeah, well, bad luck. Can I had, actually had that comment with somebody one time. Oh, you couldn't do that because Blade's not white. And I just go, well, hold on. If you can do it the other way, why can't you do it this way? If it's, if it's okay for the goose, it's good for the gander. You know what I mean? We want to hear your comments below on what you think about that. Now, we're going to have a any, and as usual... We... Struggling to park. So we are a struggling to park. So we usually finish on me. Yeah, but on this day, I think we're gonna have to go over to Connor. Go on, Connor. Right, have you got a short factoid or something? I don't think I have. I can give you a really silly one about Turkey. My wife read this to me just now. I Apparently, Turkey is the only place that are offering mustache transplants. Okay. Oh, nice. <laughs> well, we're in a car park. Um, this is yes, the to it, basically. Um, the driver, a driver left his car in the car park. Oh, screw it, I'm parking here. Um, well, of course, when he comes back, though, the car park is basically gone, vanished. He was left in a uh, car park uh, that was set to be demolished. And oh, I see. Workers that. actually demolished around the car, and what was left is the car park space with the car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's in China, isn't it? Yeah, you yeah. have to think to yourself. What was he drinking? I got, what was he drinking? I've got one before I go as well. Go on then, go on then. Have you finished? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, go on. Um, okay, the last one to go on. The joke that I absolutely hate from Skyrim, where everyone's like, you took an arrow in the knee. 
Yes. Yeah. It's actually Nordic slang for getting married. <laughs> hey! <laughs> so all I don't those want to jokes do make no sense. See, there you are. You lot know nothing about nothing. Right, my adulthood <laughs> is ruined. See, there we go. Okay, that's the end of part one. And we'll we're going to go and hang around in Abergavenny and mug people, and I've got Nightmare Owl. Go! Oh! That wasn't particularly scary, was it? But I do. Ah, it was. It was terrifying. Yeah. Anyway, we'll catch you in part two. two. Ow! Two, two. The one that died will make any way Have you? Pa, 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 pow! Here we go, everyone. Welcome to part two of episode 29 of Road Distraction, and there's a man calling me for favour already. Nice arse! Sorry, I saw an Ashland that said that was wrong on so many levels. <laughs> wrong timing. Is a gay ride because it's got Elton John, John on it? Manila. Stop it! Scary owl. Nightmare owl. Nightmare owl! Look Sounds like a superhero. Yeah, but he's got the same pen and stare as Ghost Rider. I'm going to start anyway, everyone. I got ten things that are illegal in London. Uh, number one, carrying a plank along the pavement. That's illegal in London. Uh, two, singing profane songs in the street. Uh, what's profane song? No, just I probably bad language and stuff. Yeah, we shout bollocky fuck twat, twat probably. Uh, and, and stuff most music queen. these days. Yeah. Uh, three, sliding on ice or snow. What? Well, I could imagine it's a health and safety issue, you know what I mean? Uh, being drunk in a pub. That's number four. Ah. Yeah. Defacing money. No, that's not just London, that's uh, everywhere. Yeah, that's UK, America, it's illegal, both of both, those both places. Flying a kite in a public place comes in at number six. <laughs> uh, number seven, firing a cannon within 300 yards of a house. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Playing knock down ginger. Now, I don't know what that game is, but if it actually is just running up and knocking down ginger people, <laughs> I can understand why. I think it's um, uh, knock knock ginger, but it's knock knock. Uh, what was it called? Knock up gingers. Knock up gingers. They love. Well, if anyone does know what knock knock ginger is, put it in the box below. No, knock knock gingers. You knock up someone's door. Fuck off. Oh, a uh, cherry knock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see what you mean. Face recognition. Wait, knock I hate you so much. It. If it is the same one. Number nine. It's illegal to shake a doormat in the street after eight a.m. And number 10, and I've sold this to the one guy, the guy's earring, we couldn't work out what it's exactly it meant, but it's handling a salmon in a suspicious circumstance. <laughs> mm. I'm not too sure perhaps if the salmon's wearing a dress or some pretty lipstick, I don't know. But anyway, that, that is my, that, that is apparently 10 things that are illegal in London. Yeah, they, them, right? they didn't have prostitution on there, I noticed that. <laughs> With number nine. Um, Number nine, yes. From 8 a.m. to what time? It didn't say. It just says after 8 a.m. So I presume it's probably after like something like. It's night. always after 8 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, yeah. Actually, yeah, no. It, said after but, uh, eight. it says that it didn't actually give a finish time. I wonder that. It's very strange. Because yeah, if it's after 8 a.m., then. I don't Oops, I dropped my pencil! Sorry, Lee. It's alright, I figured it out. Very loud. Anyway, it's. <laughs> Sorry. My fellow Karakans. My, my fellow Americans. Some people say I'm a teacher. <laughs> Others <laughs> say I'm a pervert. I am not a cook. I but am not a cook. All I know about Nixon <laughs> is he's a count the cutlery every time he left the White House. Get him, Agnew! Yeah. <laughs> I got cancelled again. I know, Futurama's cancelled, folks. Again. Oh, what? Did, did they make him mind up tonight? The family guys are still going. Yeah. Oh. I'm gonna go for the win. Oh, well, things oh, become popular and unpopular and then popular yeah, again, who knows? You know, it's like flays and stuff, I suppose they'll come back or something. Golly, hope not. Anyway, right. anyway, my story. Leopold! A gun has sold on eBay for £5,000, which was wow. 3D printed. And of course, there's a big uh, Ferrari about it now, because it's going to make guns easy to make for literally anybody. Um, Somebody's posted the templates online of this 3D gun called the um, Liberator and you, if you have a 3D printer, you can print one off. Uh, it looks more like a hairdryer than a conventional firearm, it will be said. But um, it costs £5,000 and its makers are defence distributed in Austin, Texas. 
Uh, Say to all the Americans, guns don't kill people. Well, they don't, but you know, people kill people. If they haven't got a gun, they'll do it with a blunt rock or a stick or a sharpened nice. screwdriver or a spoon or a toothbrush with a pointy bit on the end. Yeah. You can see where I'm getting at now. I mean, you can't blame that for spelling mistakes. It's not guns, it's, guns don't kill people, it's the people all them. Yeah, that's what I said, it's yeah. like blaming the principal spelling mistakes. Yeah. Um, if you don't know what's really silly. Yeah. If you don't know what 3D printing is, folks, it's basically you get this, awesome. you buy this, this polymer, plastic, and it's heated up. And basically it creates the item in thin layers, it gradually puts layers together, and eventually it casts up this fantastic shape. And They're it, amazing. Yeah, they've been used to create the figures, all kinds of stuff. If you go onto the site um, Etsy.com, so like shop place, oh, you see awesome. tons of stuff. Cool stuff on there. Etsy. So yeah, it's a gun, folks. What is the world coming to? Well, you can do the same with knives, can you? Make, you, you could resin cast a knife, and they would be just as dangerous. I mean, they didn't have steel a few million years ago, or a few hundred thousand <laughs> years ago, I should say. Or four thousand years ago, if you're of that persuasion. Yes, six thousand years ago, when the world began. <laughs> it's only 2013, no? <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> Don't get me started with godlike people, because I will rip them a new fucking arsehole. <laughs> if we evolved from monkeys, why are there still monkeys? <laughs> <laughs> how, come I, how come then I haven't had a monkey baby? Well, if you did have a monkey baby, I'd have to really, really worry, worry about your choice in boyfriends. But there we go. Anyway! Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to speak up now, folks, because we're in the middle of the rain! Because the rain! Cars go! In the world of football this week, there's been a lot of controversy in all that crap. Uh, we know about what this. What a change! Um, fall, fall asleep. No, it's all I've viewed all week in, in workers. Oh, Sonsi Sonsi's retiring from football! Don't give a fuck! Um, Sir Alex Ferguson is retired from Man United. Uh, Wayne Rooney is thinking of leaving Man United. David Moyes has been appointed the new manager of Man United. And Jose Mourinho is currently going back to Chelsea. Yay! You know they just run around the field chasing a ball, don't you? It's My like dog does that. It's yeah. like watching dogs in a park. It is. No, okay, they get paid a lot of money for what they do. I suppose it's because their careers are relatively short. But let's be honest, even if their careers are 25 years long, there's no way in 25 years I'm earning 30 million. No. Careers are as short as their dicks. And their IQs. I've never seen a footballer's penis, James. No, well, <laughs> well obviously you've never there. played football then. Because um, <laughs> yeah. other footballers do, he goes, do you want to bath me? Go on then, we'll get in the showers. Oh, Ben didn't pick up the soap. Now, no, we don't go there. I'm not trying to imply all football players are gay, but you're just a bunch of fucking queens. Now, sorry, no, I didn't mean that. <laughs> just kidding, guys. Now I don't do sport, but all I've heard all week is that. Yeah. All of you is, oh, he's finishing. You've just got another fucking figurehead to stand there. I know. Um, I'm a man that I find myself in it. Is, it is a shock in the years going, but I do agree with Paul that there's been a bit of oversaturation with it. Oh, gosh, terrible. He, I know he has been charged for 26 years, which in the modern game is a fantastic achievement. It's a long seeing, career. Seeing as everybody, get, you know, new managers these days, give like a week and then they sack and somebody yeah. else comes in. But fantastic achievement, Fergie. Um, I welcome David Moyes. Welcome to the club. Let's see what you can do. That's it. But it always cracks me up. They'll go, oh, they lost this football game. It's the manager's fault. Well, hold on. Who, who trains them? Sure, it's the trainer's fault. If the football players aren't up to scratch and aren't fit enough, that's the guy who's trained them, not the manager. Technically, that manager decides what money is spent where yeah. to buy players. But technically, I suppose he's just a figurehead. He's the face. And decides what money goes. He doesn't train them. He doesn't go, right, I'm running up and down the field with you to chase the ball. No, he's not. He's in a fucking place, smoking a cigar, drinking a whiskey, while you lot run around the pitch like headless chickens. And that should be headless chickens, but I went common for the effect. That's my rambo. Sorry. Yo, I'm, I'm done. James, your turn. Okay, I'm going to review. Go on then, speak up. Okay, my review is on Far Cry Blood Dragon. So this game is set after Vietnam War II, <laughs> in the apocalypse after the apocalypse. It's an 80s style first person shooter with scan lines across the, uh, the screen. There's laser guns, VHS tapes, the action hero is a cyber. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, back up just two sentences. Laser guns and VHS tapes. Yeah. The collectibles, when you pick them up, it says rent this VHS tape. Oh, right, I couldn't work out, oh, that was futuristic. It's okay, carry on. It's like an, eight, it's a, kind of an 80s movie trope, everything that <laughs> the 80s movies had. The game. 
even parodies the chain gun scene from Predator. <laughs> at the very start, when you're in a helicopter, along with Long Tall Sally playing. Yay! And it's a free roam game. There are robot sharks, panthers. <laughs> Have they got freaking laser beams on their heads? Yes. Good. And of course, blood dragons. Blood dragons are basically Tyrannosaurus rexes that shoot lasers from their ass. From their ass! But yeah, yes. you have no fall damage, and you basically, the game just basically makes you with a super cyborg badass. And I'm gonna give him 4.5 death maybe. Yay! Is that out of 5? That's out of 5. That's out of 5. Um, I'll carry on from that a second. Uh, I looked it on the PS Store, or PSN Store, whatever yeah. you call it. Um, it says, clearly specifically says, Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon does not require a copy of Far Cry 3. No, it doesn't. Right? You've just said it's an open world free run game. Yeah. I looked at how many gigabytes it is. 1.9 gigabytes. Yes. How the hell is it a free run game if it's 1.9 gigabytes? It's all cooler than the data map, then. Yeah, and a compression. If you don't require the copy of Far Cry 3, then why is it 1.9 gigabytes? Why uh, is it so small? I can see what you mean. Yeah. Have oh, they put a point in this 19? It's even got a training montage, by the way. Oh, 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 oh. like Rocky. Yeah, Highlander. It, it was one point now. I was like, what the flame? Oh, and the, the um, announcer from Mortal Kombat in it. Hey, who's that? In the arena, you go in, he just goes, test your lights. <laughs> Mortal Kombat! It's also got zombies. Mortal Kombat! I can actually go on for that. Now. I'm going to talk about a film that nobody would have ever heard of. Oh, in, in 2012, there was a film called Strippers vs. Uh, uh, Werewolves. Have you heard of it? Yep. It was, uh, and, and, oh, it was released in 2012. On its opening weekend, only four people saw it and made $38. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yes! One for the record books, that is, I'm telling you now. That's all kinds of brilliant. I'm seeing an awful lot of all kinds today. I do apologise to all the people out there. Oh, God. oh dear, dear. You go on, Lee. Go on, Lee. Go on, Lee. Go on, Lee. 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 It's Lee. Okay, the island that inspired the film The Wicker Man has recently gone on sale for two and a half million pounds. Ooh, I wouldn't go there. Uh, it's called Tanera Moor, and it's the largest of the Summer Isles in West Scotland. Now only two residents live there, and they decided to sell up after the local mainland community decided against republicing it. The Wicker Man, as you may know, was released in 1973, star with Edward Wood, 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 Wood. Edward Fonda uh, Christopher Lee and Britt Eklund. And it is a very surreal film, if you It is, very strange. It's very trippy. But yeah, the island is for sale. Pagans apply. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to burn Edward Woodward's double to death. You don't have a lot of luck, he died in that film. He died in, sh um, 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 oh, Hot Fuzz. Oh, strike, he did, yeah. Which is scary, because in that film, when he's there with that beard, he really looked like my dad, when my dad had his big white beard towards the end. Mm -hmm. We should have probably discussed the trailer for the new film. Oh, at World's End. Yeah. The new Simon Pegg, Nick Frost, and I can't remember the name who directs it. Uh, Ed something. I don't remember. Anyway, the guy who directed Hot Fuzz on Show of the Dead. The trailer is out for it, and it looks brilliant. If you've loved the other two films, I would suggest you go look for the trailer, and when it's out in the cinema, go and watch it. Well, go and watch it twice. Right, because it's gonna be fucking awesome. It's got aliens and Simon Pegg with grease bark hair, dressed like a like a gothy rock guy. Okay. There we go. And 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 and, and the running fence guy. Yeah, Scott. No, 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 it's Scott. Scott and you, Scott's dead. We still got a home bargains. Yes. yes. Okay. Which means there'll be a part three. Oh God. For the first time ever, three parts of three parts of brutal distraction. One night only. Megasaurus oh. Rex. Oh, there he is. Shark-headed Rexy thing. Octopusy creature. Octopus. Sci-fi channel, should we come? Yes. Okay. Connor. <laughs> Whose story is it now? Yes, it's Connor's. <laughs> I turned around and said Scott, and I thought, no. No, they are in Scott. It's Connor, and I just lost it. I've taken off his Scott. We don't know where he went. Oh, fuck it. I've done the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Connor. Go, right. Connor. Quick, um, quick, 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 quick. Right, I'm sure you all heard of the Gumball Rally, the Gumball yes. 3000 Rally. Yep, 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 yep. Um, this year, someone has actually made a replica of the... Uh, 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 
You're going to read those words? Um, in the Dark Knight, you know Batman's car? The Batmobile? Yeah, the Tumblr. <laughs> yeah, in the Dark Knight, they've actually made a replica of that car and they're looking to enter it this year. Oh God. The right. international racing crew, Team Gala, will stand out from the crowd in their version of the sleek jet black supercar driven by Batman in Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight trilogy. Ooh. It costs... Uh, they invested over £1 million to create the impressive Batmobile racer, as they called it. Mm, this boasts boast in a powerful 400 brake horsepower, 6.2 litre V8 engine, as uh, a 2.5 ton cross between a Lamborghini and a tank, and can reach speeds top at 100 miles an hour. All right. Do you know about that car? When it was originally wanted to be designed, they gave it the American crews to build it, and they said it was impossible. <laughs> so they give it to a British special effects crew who built it. Yeah. And it works. It does actually drive. It's a heavy car. It's really powerful. And it works. And the steering works. I tell you, just pull out, mate. That's fine. Uh, but the American crew saw it's not possible to make it. Give it the British crews. Yeah, we'll knock out together. A couple of bits from Ikea. You know. Yeah, a couple of old shelves, a bit of a fridge. Yeah, we'll make that. No, they made it, and they made it, and the American crews couldn't. The proves that British mechanics know what the fuck they do doing. Exactly. We um, can make anything. Well, for those in London, the tank-like vehicle, as they say, will be showcased in London later this month before heading for the starting line in Copenhagen on May 18th. Copenhagen? Yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's a parking part, space by here. And this part on some bad news. Go on, then. Uh, EA Games got the rights to Star Wars games. Yes, they did. Yep. Why is that bad news? Because it's a pile of shit. Yeah, but it's Star Wars, and let's be honest, the last three films sucked. Yeah, but games aren't always terrible with Star Wars. I mean, recently they have been. <laughs> Give us Battlefront! Yeah, Battlefront 3! Republic Wait. Commando 2! Yeah! What the hell's wrong with you? Nobody wants to play Force Unleashed 50 billion... What, what was that thing about Gungan Adventures or something it was called, wasn't it? I hope that was a, a joke. Now they were making Star Wars 1313. Yeah. Which is about you played as young Boba Fett. Yeah. I seen um it was on a news report and EA registered all these Star Wars trademarks and one of them was called Gungan Adventures. Oh, Jesus. Oh, dear. Crime GA. And you already Rose? made the old Republic and that was the biggest piece of shit on the market. Nobody liked it. I didn't even play it and I read loads of people going, it's just shit. It was the Tortanic. As they call it online. It's oh, to the bottom of the ocean ah. all the players were like, sink into feature. <laughs> okay. That's um, the end of part two. End of part two. We'll be back for part three. We're just going to go and have a bit of a nose in Brimau. Bye. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> this will probably be in the outtakes. Um, that sounded like a castle in your death. So. I, I don't know. Don't play it. Okay, everyone, after the stupidity we just heard for four seconds, oh, uh, welcome back on. to part three. Doom, 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 doom. Part trois, if you're in I've, I've got a short one. Well, uh, you <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> that, really? Okay. Part three. You should never use Calvin Klein's obsession. Now, they don't state in this story whether it's for men or for women, uh, if you're ever on safari, because apparently the smell of it will attract cheetahs, tigers, jaguars, and other wild cats. Yeah. So, the answer is, Calvin Klein attracts pussy. The thing is, <laughs> cheetahs, <laughs> cheetahs are docile animals. Doesn't matter, he attracts them. Last thing I want they, um, is a four and a half foot cat weighing about a, two, two or three stones standing and going. Right, the thing is, docile or not, I'm going to pan myself. Cheetahs are like, they're really nervous animals. To the point where in zoos, because um, they're so nervous to even walk around, they gave them uh, dog companions. So the dog. Which they promptly ate. I don't know. Yeah, the dogs are best friends. Oh, I, I think that one over there at the dog. It looks like it. A woman at everything. Sorry, we're all being bitchy again, guys. Sorry. We have this problem where we just. We get together and I say we just we bastards. Bunch of bitches. Yep. Bunch of bitches <laughs> in part three. This is welcome to bitches of distraction. <laughs> Pardon me, I do. That dress she was wearing. Oh my god. Those shoes with those ankles. Oh my god. No. We're American, no, are we? Yeah. No American way, bitch. girlfriend. Sex in the clitty. Sorry, city. <laughs> Starring an horse. <laughs> yeah. I did. Be the one. SJP. That's the one. <laughs> Why do women idolize her? She's the longest face I've ever seen. 
<laughs> right, me! Oh my god, I'm ready. <laughs> Please turn, because I just told the one about Calvin Klein. I can do another one if you want me to, I don't no, care. Sorry. We've got a story. Uh, in the Brecon Beacons, a lamb has been born with half black and half white face. It's evil! Burn it! You don't have to do this, Dent. Yes! That was my first fault. We have two face in lamb form. Uh, born by brigands, uh, the face is black and white, its body is black and white, and also the legs are as well. They alternate colours on the legs. It's Michael Jackson! No, it's not white enough for Michael Jackson. There's a picture on the screen now. <laughs> right there. How would this come to occurrence then? I don't know, just one of these genetic things. Uh, the owner, uh, Marianne Griffiths, is the farmer. She said, We've never seen a lamb like it before. We either get a white lamb or black one, but not a half and half. And they've nicknamed it Battenberg. Ah, that's great. Somebody's going to eat Battenberg sometime soon, then. That's lovely. Connor! Um, in what else been not young, a, a, cycl a cyclopath for cyclists, and there's been they put double bites on their double euros. Huh. And just 136 cent, 4.5 4. feet wide, not even a smart car to drive down this narrow cycle path. God bless councils. <laughs> I, I don't understand why they're They're clever motherfuckers, are Because, if I remember correctly, I was watching, and I saw this news, which I could watch it on. Um, it, it was a council, I can't remember where the location was. They actually did this in an alleyway, which is... You did that story? I think you've done that. I've yeah. done similar. Right in an alleyway, you couldn't even get a bicycle down there. It's too yeah. narrow, they put double yellow lines double on yellows. it. They're brilliant people, aren't they? Why did you do it? Because we were told we had to. Yeah, it's just coming to something called common sense, which people don't have anymore. Yeah. Oh god, I give up, boy. Dear, dear, dear. James! Hello. Your turn. Okay, um, I don't know how many of you know what E3 is. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so yes, E3, I E2, but E3 one more. is in less than a month. Right. And Nintendo aren't going. Oh. And I don't understand why they're doing I know they're going to have like an online presentation that's going to last about two hours before E3, but I don't understand why, when they have a failing console on the market, they wouldn't go to the biggest yeah, biggest trade, trade show, because yeah. the Wii U is fucking plummeting faster than the Engage. <laughs> it's plummeting faster than my sex life. I actually have an Engage. <laughs> yeah, I know. Have you been to the TO home? No. There's two consoles I've never played. Um, the Engage and Magnavox Odyssey, the Virtual Boy. The one Game Boy console they brought out, which was the Atari 2600, the Sega Saturn, the Sega Jaguar. Um, the one, yeah, exactly. the one um, Game Boy console they brought out, which was probably about just about Game like, Boy Micro. Yeah, that's him. That's the name of it. Sega that's Game Gear, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Advance SP, yeah. 3DS, 3DS XL, DS, DS Lite, DSi. <laughs> And it goes on and on. I played uh, Virtual Boy, a piece of shit. Okay. And now we've got coming out the Oya or whatever the hell it's called. Oh yeah, the um the uh oh, god sake, yeah, I know the one you're on. And then you've got the Oculus Rift. Yeah, and the piston. Is the porn. Porn. piston is the Steam console, yeah. Oh god, there was another one possibly being made. We're gonna be there forever. Oh no, the Oculus Rift one, yeah. I know. I yeah, know what you People have had Oculus Rifts now. Yeah, and apparently Skyrim's going to be patched with it as well, so that'd be interesting. Definitely different. Bloody, they saw, there's a video on YouTube of a 90-year-old woman playing on the Oculus Rift, and she's like... Ooh. She's like, holy crap. The pictures are coming alive! Yeah, it's like the TV's it. walked into the room! <laughs> I'm talking about TV, like I just hear it on yes. uh, The TV series Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., they've made the pilot episode. ABC have seen the pilot episode, and just on that pilot, pilot episode, have greenlit a full season to start filming. I think that's quite good. And yes, Agent Coulson is in it. And yes, it is set after The Avengers. Ah. I Work that one out. A body double. Yeah, like the coil. Well, do you know, I hope they do that instead of like something else that's really stupid and awful, because... It's another alternate universe. I don't know what it'll be. But anyway, that's what they've done. <laughs> That's what they've done there. The only other bit of film news I actually had on you is I have actually mentioned a few times on here about the Crow remake, that they're rebooting it. 
again for the billionth time. And over the last couple of months, they've actually turned around and said, oh, we want Mark Wahlberg. And he turned around and went, no, basically get lost. I'm not going to do it. And then they went to, and I can't remember who it was, somebody else. And then they went to the guy who's playing Professor X in X-Men First Class. And I can't remember his name either. I've gone blank on that. And uh, he was interested. And then that fell through. And then the guy who played Loki, uh, they thought about him, but he wasn't oh, interested, so it fell through. Yeah, Tom Hiddleston. He looks like Tommy was so in the new fall trailer. Uh, then they were on about the guy uh, from True Blood who plays um, Eric, and that sort of like came and went like a blink of an eye. And now it's Luke Evans. Uh, he has actually said yes, he's interested, and he's signed to start filming in 2014. Now, if you don't know who Luke Evans is, he is the detective who helps in the film The Raven. He is also in the new Fast and the Furious film of the bad guy in there. And, you know, Fast and the Furious 98. <laughs> but you had to say, but I've never seen a Fast and the Furious film because I've never seen everyone Fast watch and it. Fast and the Furious, homoerotic. <laughs> <laughs> but the newest one looks like a full on kick ass action film. It's really weird. They had a trailer at um, Iron Man 3. Yeah, they said it Which we didn't get to discuss, by the way, guys. Iron no, Man we 3. didn't. No, no, we have to do that on episode We do that on the next one. 30. By then, whatever we say might not be a spoiler. If it is, tough. <laughs> but yeah, they've done that now. She started signing it. He signed up for it. Um, only thing I can hope for that is they actually get it close to the book. I enjoyed the Brandon Lee version. But because he died, uh, all the backstory stuff was cut short. So he couldn't film a lot of it. But they changed it. I mean, they, they had him die in a flat. And in the comic books, he didn't. He died when they were out on a picnic. And they said that, you know, she protested something. It didn't. It was coincidence. These bad guys came along. It's just, there's certain parts of the story element which are the same and different. So I hope they get it this time close to the book. Because the I, book is violent as hell. I've only got one fact left. So I'm Go on then. Go on, well, do it. That's a new story, actually. Go on then. Um, a man's brain leaked for 18 months, but he thought it was a runny nose. Okay. Eventually, he went to the doctors to find out... You know why his nose kept running, and it turns out he actually had a hole in his brain, and it was leaking out through his nose. <laughs> that would be a hole in his skull, then, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, it yeah. must be for brain for It was month. just leaking down out through his nose every day. He just had to have tissues out all the time. Imagine that brain fluid. Oh my God! Well, the, the brain produces enough for you not to notice it. All you got to think is, right? If if it did cause any real, real brain damage after a year, it could probably be a politician. Mm -hmm. But he'll be the next Prime Minister. Oh, good. Okay. And on that note, it is time to end episode 29 of Road to Distraction. Nightmare Owl. Nightmare Owl making his debut. Will <gasps> he be with us next time? I don't know. Yes, he will. Oh, apparently he will. Death Bears apparently uh, gone for a little bit of a sleep. Uh, yeah, Nightmare Owl. Oh, hey, we love both of them. Duo. It's going to look like the Sooty and Sweep showing you. <sighs> No, please don't make those kind of gay sounds in the back. Of <laughs> All those gay sounds. There's gay sounds. Oh. I mean, <laughs> oh. That's the one. Yeah, that owl just barked. Oh, James, I was ripping my eye. Sorry. <laughs> well, oh, you pushed the nose piece into my eye. That was uh, uncomfortable. Well, you've had one bad eye, now you've got the other. Oh, no, it's the same eye. <laughs> oh, that's the word. Sorry. It was Nightmare Owl's <laughs> fault. I hate my son. Right, N Nightmare Owl will not be on the next episode, he'll be dead. <laughs> He'd be burning on a pile. I'm cooking the fucker on a barbecue. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm drawn and quartered. Anyway, uh, that's the end of episode 29. 29? It'll be the big 3-0 next big time. Big 3-0. Yeah, 300. Wait a minute, Lee, are you 29? Yes, I am 29. They yeah. are! Hey! <laughs> It all sings Happy 40th, Lee. Is that where the Thank Backstreet you. Boys are? <laughs> I feel like it. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> so, uh, it's bye-bye uh, from everyone, and we will catch you on the next episode. Where it stops, nobody knows. And here we go yet again. I'm trying to make I'm sure my camera doesn't fall over. It's Lee's camera, actually, but we yes. we won't make that hero there. We are in a communist state. What is mine yeah. is Paul's. And what, and what is, is mine is mine. Yes. <laughs> All hail Kim Jong Un. <laughs> dead. <laughs> yes, he did a better job of running the country than his son. So. Which is a bit <laughs> worrying. What do you expect? You put a guy who thinks Starcraft is real in charge of a government. What do you expect? 
<sighs> anyway, <clears throat> hello, and here we go. <laughs> la, 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 lion, sorry, lemon face, lion face, lemon face, lion face. Okay. <laughs> There's the outtakes. Um, <laughs> okay, and in three, 